welcome to Kindness Matters. Cat Depot is your resource for rescue, adoption, and education. And Kindness Matters is a show that explores animal kindness through humane education and also meets some of the animal welfare experts in our community. For more resources on how you too can help make Kindness Matter, visit our website, catdepot.org. My name is Amanda Ward, and I'm the Community Education Specialist here at Cat Depot. My job requires me to wear a lot of different hats, just like most in the nonprofit world. But the best part about my job is when I get to meet with other members of the animal welfare community and learn about what they do and how they are making kindness matter in the world today. Today on Kindness Matters, we are excited to welcome Kayla Owen as our special guest. She is a veterinary nurse in our shelter medical center. Um, Kayla and I actually began working at Cat Depot on the same day. Um, but Kayla, your journey at Cat Depot started even earlier, as well as your journey with animals. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what brought you here? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Sarasota, so I've always kind of known about Cat Depot, the mission. Um, I can remember coming here in middle school, and <laughs> you know my friend's mom would bring us so we could pet the cats, and it was just always, Cat Depot has just always been kind of on, on the table, you know, just always kind of in the background, you know, like, oh, hey, I drove by Cat Depot today. Um, but in early 2017, um, my boyfriend and I came to Cat Depot to, you know, look around and kill some time, <laughs> and we all know how that goes. Ended up meeting a special needs cat named Muggsy. We already had another cat at home. And uh, we walked in, and she just rolled over and purred, and we looked at each other, and we were like, well, she's coming home with us. <laughs> and, you know, we've had her for, you know, five years now, and she's just the best and we love her so much and that really kind of brought cat depot to the forefront because as i've worked in the medical or in the veterinary field you know i'd look at her records and go you know wow they they did everything that you know a, a multi-million dollar you know company or vet clinic would do and that was like wow you know they they do more than i ever thought that they would so when i you know applied and got the job at cat depot i was my, my whole family knew that I was just over the moon because <laughs> I was going to be able to work in a you know nonprofit and work with cats and just be able to help cats like they helped mine and I was so excited and I'm still so excited every day that I get to help them and get them adopted and seeing the cases through and then meeting the families that they go home to is you can't put a price tag on that it's I it's amazing <laughs> awesome I'm really glad to hear that um so speaking of cases, um, let's talk for a minute about one of the more recent cases that you've had, um, Teddy Jr. Oh, yeah. So taking it back to the beginning, um, Teddy Jr., he came to us um, from another shelter. We help out, you know, a lot of other shelter or animal services that, you know, see maybe a sudden, you know, a surge in cat number of cats that they get. Or um, they just, you know, they'll reach out and be like, hey, we have a couple cases that we're not equipped to handle. Um, but thankfully, Cat Depot is, you know, will you help out and you know we say yes and we picked up a couple of cats teddy jr being one of them he came with the name i don't know if there was a teddy <laughs> senior but he is teddy jr um and he had um what we call an ear hematoma it's where the pinna which is like their outer portion of their ear was swollen and he was very painful he was the sweetest cat he still is but you know you'd reach in and he would just you know he didn't want you to touch his head it was painful and he'd just been painful for who knows how long. So we, you know, attempted to treat, you know, like we normally would because he had an ear infection and most hematomas are caused by an ear infection. Usually it's repeated itching or, you know, shaking their head. So we tried to treat the ear infection, but we realized that it was not going to go away if we didn't see what was going on with this big old swollen ear. So we um, put him under sedation just for a dental cleaning, you know, but might as well, you know, clean up his teeth while he was mm -hmm. under. And we took a look at the ear. We realized it was solid. We had never been able to really touch the ear because of just how shy he was with it. And it was, you know, pain that he didn't need. So we just kind of let it, you know, we we're like, we'll touch it when he's, you know, not going to feel it. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, very hard. And we were like, that's really weird. Normally they're soft and squishy. So we took an x-ray and we realized that it had calcified, which means that the body was treating it like bone. Okay. Um, and it spread further, just a little bit further than what you can see on like his normal ear flap. So we, you know, decided that obviously it's painful and most cats do really well without the outer portion of their ear. So we removed it, 
um, sent it off for testing. Everything came back good. You know, it was just the body, it had been swollen for so long that the body said, well, I, I think this is bone. I don't know. So the body just treated it like bone because it didn't know what else to do with it. Okay. Um, and he is doing absolutely amazing. His hair is growing back. So he's just got the, you know, one ear flap and then he's just kind of got like a little flat side. But <laughs> he, we're finishing up treating that ear infection that he had for presumably most of his life. Um, and he, the whole time has just remained so sweet and now even more so without the ear, he has gotten even sweeter and he loves head scratches now <laughs> because he can enjoy them without right. any kind of pain. And he, I just, I can't say enough about him because he has just, for someone to be, you know, in that kind of pain, think about like an ear infection that you've had mm -hmm. and how much you hated the world and yes. you just wanted it to go away. <laughs> Absolutely. He, he was so sweet and understanding and he knows that we were here to help and he just gave in and let us help him and we're just excited to hopefully get him you know ready to go to his forever home soon yeah i, I believe he is actually ready for adoption at this point um yeah, i think he should be <laughs> i know he had one family that was potentially looking mm -hmm. at him um, he is going to have a lot of medical bills, yes. from my understanding over the years um, we don't know the cause of the ear infection sometimes they're just like a one-off and he had it for a really long time or this could be a chronic reoccurring issue. Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna be something where like, oh, we cure the ear infection and he's good forever. Um, it's something that may you know, require being established with a family veterinarian and saying, hey, this is his history. So maybe he needs more frequent you know, mm -hmm. vet exams or ear rechecks or possibly even you know, cleanings at home, things right. like that. Something that's not just like set and forget. Um, it will need like a very vigilant eye to, to make sure that his ears don't get to that point again. Right, and I, I'm I'm sure, I have no doubt that he will find that family that yeah. will give him the medical care he needs, but also just the love and attention and affection he deserves. Yeah. Oh, for sure. There is, as my mother says, a shoe for every foot. Yes. So even, you know, <laughs> our, you know, cats here that have had the medical issues or, you know, they're very shy, but, you know, they'll say, hey, you know, so-and-so got adopted, and I'm like, you know, I knew it. You know, there is someone for everyone. There My is. own cat was at Cat Depot for two years. We were the shoe for that foot. We were the one that just fit with her. And right. You, you never know who that person's going to be or, you know, when they're going to come in, but we know as an organization and personally, they're out there. We just have to wait. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, actually, I wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, the actual process of how we get cats here at Cat Depot. Um, we do have a cat surrender program um, where people who can no longer care about their pet, care for their pets, which is always a sad situation. Um, for whatever reason, whether it be, you know, eviction, medical bills or whatever, age, you know, there's all sorts of reasons people can no longer care for their pets. Um, and that's what we're here for. We are understanding of every situation and we do our best to try and keep them in their homes. Mm -hmm. So let's say, you know, grandma passes away and, you know, the grandson is left with the cat, but he has allergies. We talk to him and say, do you have a cousin? Do you have a neighbor who, you know, do you have anyone who's met this cat before right. that the cat knows and we can keep it? And we do get a lot of cats rehomed mm -hmm. that way without ever actually coming to the shelter. Right. Because people, you know, when you're in a situation like that and you're, oh God, you know, I Panic. have to, you know, get rid of the cat. And it's a very emotionally taxing for not only the cat, but for the people that are surrounding the cat as well. Um, especially when it's something like an eviction or, you know, God forbid a death. Um, it's, there's so many other things that sometimes, you know, the animals get caught in the undertow. Mm -hmm. But we're here to help and to bounce ideas off of you and to be like, hey, have you thought of this? And a lot of people are like, has it even crossed my mind? Right. And then we never hear from them again because they found that other home yeah. without ever having to come in. And that's um, our intake coordinator, Cody. She just, that is, I mean, her her godsend. I mean, that yes. is what she has her heart. And she <laughs> does so well at it. And it takes a big heart to, you know, talk to these people who are grieving, frustrated, mm -hmm. and just turn that around and, you know, you know, we're here to help what right. can we do and it's absolutely amazing but yeah. in those situations where we are you know where they end up i mean we we're here you know we are and if if people do have an issue where they are looking to surrender their cat we do have a form on our website it is really the best way to get cody all the information that she needs um it's on our website catdepot.org slash cat dash surrender 
Um, and you can also email Cody at admissions at catdepot.org. Um, she's always available to um, reach out to you okay. when she's in the office. Um, she will answer voicemails, answer emails. Mm -hmm. um, she's very good at getting back to you. She has a giant notebook and she will she gets back to everyone, even if it's just a simple <laughs> check-in. She will call, you know, and yes. again, you know, even if it's just offering you the alternative or, you know, hey, you know, how can we help? And right. even some people just need a lending ear, you know, just a shoulder to cry on and she's there on the phone. Right. And we do at Cat Depot also have a lot of services for people who financially are just struggling to take care of their pets right now. Um, as part of our Keep Pets in Homes programs, um, we do have a food bank um, for pet food, um, for cat food and litter sometimes mm -hmm. um, that we run out of our shelter as well as we have a couple different um, like financial programs mm -hmm. in our veterinary clinic. Mm -hmm. um, so there's all sorts of resources here at Cat Depot um, for people who are just struggling right now and in the future um, to take care of their pets, even short term or long term. We have solutions to help. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just just call. Yeah. I mean, call, email. <laughs> yes. That's what we're here for. If you're, you know, I, if, would this apply to me? We can help you figure it out. Right. And like like I said, we are we are that resource. We are Cat Depot is a resource in the community, and even nationally. If if you don't know how to get help in your area, we can help you find shelters in your area. We can help you find programs in your area. Mm -hmm. um, we we want to be there for everybody that we can for sure um so why don't we talk really quick about kind of the process for when we do intake an animal yeah. um how do we get them in the door and then back out the door yeah so you know as we talked you know however they come to us whether it be you know from an owner surrender um or you know from we help out another shelter another organization um they come to us they first see usually me or one of my other nurses um, they get, you know, a full physical by us. We check them for um, anything that could spread to another cat or to the facility. So we check them for ringworm, other parasites, make sure they don't have fleas. Um, they also get like a, you know, behavioral evaluation. We see, you know, can, is this cat a feral cat or is this cat just scared? You know, we, you know, love on them. You know, they get, you know, brushed for fleas. They just, they kind of get like a full work over from us. And then once we determine that, you know, if they, have something is it you know manageable um or do they not have anything at all yay um usually quickly after they get you know vaccines if they need them um they get their vet exams or um, on staff veterinarian you know will come in you know and give them a good look over um give them a rabies vaccine if they need it um and then you know we have two rooms that we use as like our intake holding they get you know warm you know blankets their own litter box you know food water toys um and then there you know they kind of wait you know to if they need um, anything else, if they need any medical care, um, if they're waiting on any services, like to be spayed or neutered, mm -hmm. um, they, you know, can kind of hang out there and they have their own space, you know, they're not stressed out. We have a TV, music, um, really treats, catnip, all the things a cat could want. And they just usually kind of hang out for, you know, sometimes it's less than a day, sometimes it's a couple of days, depending on what's going on. And then once we determine that they are healthy or healthy to the point where we can say, yes, they can mm -hmm. go out to the floor. and you know, and they're not going to spread anything to any of our other cats. We are very, um, I would say cautious. Yeah. And we, you know, we do a very good job of, you know, other shelters have trouble, you know, or can have trouble with infection control, you know, or like something spreading. Um, thankfully to our cat care team, who is very vigilant, as well as our medical team, um, we have a very low transmission rate of mm -hmm. anything. I would, almost none, um, that we've done a very good job at keeping, on, you know, a yeah. very, very strict cleaning and rotating and moving. I'd say they we're get, very proactive. Very proactive. Even if we think, hmm, could this? We treat it like it has it. You know, we just, we, we don't want something to happen. Yeah. Um, then, you know, at the shelter, you know, have to be quarantined. We just, we are very cautious about things. But once we are determined that we are healthy, A-OK, -okay, we got everything we need on board, we, they're moved out to the adoption floor. And for a cat to be moved out to the adoption floor, the, um, we have, you know, certain managers that are in charge of, you know, where cats can go. They come to us and they come to the cat care team and say, hey, with Fluffy, what's her behavior like? Mm -hmm. You know, it may say, you know, two-year-old adult and you may think, okay, you know, kind of, you know, you know, want to play and move around. And we'd be like, oh, this cat is an old lady in a kitten's body. You know, like, <laughs> they, they don't want to play. You know, they just want to sit there and sit in the sun. And they say, okay, well, I think they do great with these other cats. 
and we try and do, you know, like a, you know, we, we supervise them as they're introduced, mm -hmm. but then once we realize that everybody's going to be, you know, hunky-dory and okay with each other, then, you know, they hang out there and they have, you know, more TVs, beds, food, a little outdoor area in some of the pods, and they just hang out there and wait for their forever homes. Yeah, our pods are really well, well equipped <laughs> with everything cats could ever want, and it also okay. helps them get ready to be in a home. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of comforts of home in our pods. For sure. We have furniture, mm -hmm. TVs, music, noise, mm -hmm. all sorts of things to just make them feel comfortable mm -hmm. as if they were going to be in a home. Yeah. It's really one of the ways I think that we do some of the best work of rehoming cats. Yeah, it, it, um, it gets them ready. Like you said, yeah. you know, it, it gets them, you know, like, like you said, we do have, you know, some of them even have like a couch type, mm -hmm. like a plastic couch in there. Um, but chairs, I mean, cat scratchers, just, they, they have so much, you know, stimulation in there. Right. It's, it helps them really adjust, to get in from that transition from shelter to home. It's mm -hmm. like that nice, you know, the pods are expertly crafted and they cater to every single, you know, different cat's needs. You know, like we have kittens. We don't put kittens with older cats because older cats are going to be like, why did you put this crazy thing in my room? <laughs> um, but, you know, and we, we keep the numbers low so that way they each can have their own space. And it just... When people come into our, you know, you know, mm -hmm. when people come into Cat Depot for the first time, they usually look at our pods and say, you know, wow, I don't, this, these are amazing. You know, I don't think yeah. I've ever seen these before. And I'll, I've never seen them before. I haven't either. Cat Depot. And they're just, they're unique. And they just, they really get those cats de-stressed and just kind of happy and content mm -hmm. and ready for a home. Right. And, and like you said, too, we do have those catios and mm -hmm. they are Love awesome. Them. Cats get to go outside and mm -hmm. sit in the sun and just enjoy their day, I love chase the lizards, in. you know, whatever. <laughs> I love coming in in the mornings and seeing cats on the catio. You know, I'll be walking down the, the sidewalk and they're all outside like, good morning. Go. <laughs> oh, I know. It's great. You greet the cats every morning. It's, it's so cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's just more of that stimulation that helps them from getting stressed out in the shelter. I mean, we have a very, very low stress shelter and we're very grateful to be able to provide that to them with, you know, all of our you know, stimulation and things like that that we provide. Um, so that way they're not, you know, just sitting, you know, in cages and being, you know, horrified the whole time they're uh -huh. here. We, we figure out what they need and we adapt to that. And right. we, you know, communicate to the team that, hey, this is what this cat wants and this is what this cat wants. And it just, they're, it's, it's unlike anything else. They are really, we do, we do a really good job yeah. of them here. They're, they're low stress. Some cats will always be, you know, a little bit, you know, unhappy because they're not in a home. Right. But we're the closest thing. Yeah, until they absolutely. Get into a home. And also, you know, we have offices mm -hmm. where our cats who do need a, even more space, maybe they don't do well with other mm -hmm. cats. Maybe they have a long lasting medical condition, so they do need to have a little separation. Um, all of our uh, management team basically has offices and cats get to live in each of the manager's mm -hmm. offices. Um, I know that some of those office cats are really the sweetest thing mm -hmm. on the planet. They love it. And, you know, they, you know, when you go in, you know, to talk to your manager about something and you get to sit down and there's just, you know, like a cat walking through your lap. I mean, it just, you know, it brightens their day and, you know, my boss, you know, or my manager, she'll come in and she's like, I can't flip papers in my office because she just wants to sit on them. Yep. And it's, it just gives them another, you know, <laughs> little, you know, thing to brighten your day to have an office cat. And it gives the cats a little bit more too, because people are coming in and out of the offices, just yep. like, you know, when you have people over, um, it really, it gives them that extra human connection mm -hmm. that some cats really do need 100%. every day, all day. Mm -hmm. Um, I know. I mean, where else can you work that you have a cat in your office? It's great. Oh, Unless you're working from home, of right. course, <laughs> which a lot of people are right yeah. now. Um. I was just saying, you know, we, you know, <laughs> hugging a kitten. I said, I've been doing this, you know, I've been in the field for years, but I've been at Cat Depot for about six months now. Mm -hmm. And I still love to hug a kitten. Right. I mean, oh, it's just, I'll, I'll never get over it. Or even cats, you know, I'm like, I, I'll be on my way home someday. And I'm like, man, I... I get to work with cats every day. Like, yeah. this is like, I still can't believe it. And I know many of my coworkers feel the same. You know, we're just, we get to work with cats every day. Right. We, we're all cat people. And, you know, you know, you go to work, you know, wherever you do. And, you know, people are like, oh, I'm a dog person. Oh, I'm a cat person. Everyone here is a cat person. And it's, and, and it's not just that it. we're cat people. We're animal people. people. Mm -hmm. Like, animal kindness, animal yes. love, animal respect. 
That's what we are all about here. It, it, not just cats. Yes, we specialize yeah. in cats, but I don't think there's a single person no. who works here that isn't just in love with all animals. Mm -hmm. Oh, we all do. I mean, and everyone here, I mean, other people, you know, have like dogs or um, we have, you know, someone that works here that I, I went over to her house and I think you know, before coronavirus and she has like a zoo of reptiles. Yes. And it is very a lot, but yeah, I, I think quite a few of our coworkers do have quite a few exotic like, animals, yeah. like snakes and lizards and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, not not exotic to like the level of you yeah. know tigers, but but, <laughs> but you exotic know exotic to me, <laughs> exotic to me as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just so many great things that we do, um, and then I know you're also um, one of the people who decides if cats go into foster care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about how that decision gets made on whether or not a cat is ready for adoption or if they need some time in foster. Yeah, so we decide if our cats need to go into foster care based on a couple of different things. Um, first and foremost, if they have a medical condition that's currently being treated. You know, as low stress and as you know, infection control that we have, they're gonna get healthier in a home. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's something, you know, simple like a parasite that takes like two weeks to t treat or like an upper respiratory infection um they're they're gonna get the best better mm -hmm. in a home so we usually try and you know reach out um you know to our fosters that are you know comfortable giving medications daily or whatever you know what have you right um whatever the cat needs as long as we feel that it's simple enough for someone who doesn't you know not like something where they need to be you know a more intense treatment um, or if it's a, you know, behavioral, you know, where they're just really shy and maybe, you know, they know people, but they're still not on board mm -hmm. with the whole living with them. Um, you know, we'll send them to foster, um, and, you know, just give them time to adjust to right. a new way of life. And, you know, we can tell that, you know, it's there and they're like, we want to, but they're just, let them open up, you know, let mm -hmm. them blossom in the foster home. And those are usually our two main ones. Um, and then when it's kitten season, you know, we get kittens anywhere from, you know, newborns to, you know, just about ready to be, you know, um, right. spayed and neutered at eight weeks old or older, depending. Um, sometimes we just need them to grow. Yeah. <laughs> they just need to grow and develop and they just need all the love and they can get. And we know when kitten season is in full swing, we are constantly reaching out to our fosters saying, hey, you know, we got some babies, we need them to pick them up and they are picked up faster than we can get them on you know get them out there because i mean again who doesn't love a kitten right and but those are usually our main kind of why we choose to foster if they're going to be in with us you know and then maybe you know wait a day or two for like a spay or a neuter procedure and then they're on the floor you know it's going to be more stress for them to transport to mm -hmm. the home try and adjust and then try and come back um but usually, you know, let's say we have a, you know, a case that we're like, okay, you know, this is an upper respiratory infection and, you know, it's going to take you know, about 10 days typically to treat. And we can, you know, kind of identify that mm -hmm. that's what's going on. We'll reach out to, you know, our fosters. And if, you know, we usually, depending on, you know, we'll contact ones that we know would do well, or we have like a foster group that we reach out to. Um, and, you know, when someone responds, you know, I, they give me a call and I say, hey, how's it going? I explain the case <laughs> to them and make sure that they are comfortable yeah. you know, being like, hey, there are going to get meds every day. Is this something you're comfortable giving? Um, and, you know, they say yes or no. And then we schedule a pickup time. We, you know, provide food, water, or well, they provide water, but yes. like the bowls, you know, um, litter, blankets, anything that they would need mm -hmm. to, you know, keep the foster in their house for the time. And then we go from there and, you know, they bring them back in for rechecks if they need them. And, you know, they keep us updated, you know, and they reach out to us if they need anything. And we have a really good relationship with our fosters and they are a blessing. We, they are angels on this earth. Yes, yes, they are. I know. I, I communicate with a few of them as well, obviously, mm -hmm. for our social media posts and to be able to provide photos and updates mm -hmm. on our Foster Fridays. Um, so I definitely do know how much hard work and effort they put in mm -hmm. to caring for these kitties that aren't even going to be theirs for mm -hmm. the long term. They just they love our animals so much mm -hmm. that they just open their hearts and their homes to these cats and kittens for such a temporary amount of time. But they just, it, the impact is so, so big. So yes, it is, it is immeasurable, you know, the impact that they provide and it, cause it's another step of getting them ready for home. You know, that gives them that love and they get, you know, just buckets and boatloads of love while they're in these foster homes. And 
goodbye is always heartbreaking for the fans. Oh, yeah. Even the ones that have done it for 10 years, you know, they fall in love with them just like we do. Right. And, but then when we say, hey, you know, you remember that, you know, the little one you had? You know, she, she was gone within a day. You know, this, someone found her and fell in love with her. And, oh, they love to hear that. Sometimes they'll even send toys. Mm -hmm. They'll come by, you know, when they bring the fosters back to us. They'll be like, well, you know, Fluffy really enjoyed this mice toy while she was with us. And, you know, we send them with it. So that way they have, they'll always kind of remember where they came from. And I think that's really sweet. It's, it just proves, you know, their love for them. And it, the, the adopters usually kind of find that really nice, too. They're like, oh, well, they really were, you know, loved by these mm -hmm. uh, fosters. And we say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They loved like they were their own. But it, that love is what pushes them mm -hmm. to keep fostering for us and to keep opening their homes right. to these cats that just need some time. Absolutely. And if people do want to learn more about our foster program, I've actually started a blog on our website for, um, for our fosters to kind of tell their story, share why they got involved in fostering in the first place, mm -hmm. and also just maybe some of the kitties that have held a special place in their heart um, during their time in foster care. So I do have updates like that on our website. I'm trying to put those out about once a month. Um, so that'll be really sweet to have that all kind of compiled in one place. And for people who are interested in considering fostering and Maybe you want to learn more about what the program entails, how to get your house ready for, for sure. having a foster, because that is a completely mm -hmm. different world than mm -hmm. just getting a cat for adoption. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have all that kind of information on our website as well. Um, so as we're starting to wrap up, I do have a question for you. Mm -hmm. What's some advice that you would want to give to somebody who's pursuing a career like yours? So... If I had to give advice to someone pursuing a career like mine, I would say have faith <laughs> and just any opportunity to learn, take it. That, I mean, I am, you know, I've been in the field for over five years and all of my skills, more or less, are on the job. I, you know, anytime, you know, someone was doing something or I was watching a TV show and I, you know, heard something, I, you know, ooh, what is that? And I wanted to know it, you know, mm -hmm. it's really just, you know, grabbing any knowledge you can and having faith that you will learn it. It's a, you'll, you know, it's very overwhelming at first when you're like, how am I ever going to learn what this med is for and what this diagnosis is? And, you know, but then it just becomes second nature and you can sm spell immune mediated thrombocytopenia, <laughs> but you can't spell driver's license, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it becomes one of those things that you don't even think about. And, you know, I look back on my years and I think when I first started and I was, I, I just kept Googling. You know, I'd see a, ch a chart would come across. I worked the front desk for a little bit and a chart would come across my desk and I'd open it, you know, and I'd be like, oh, I, 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 don't, I don't think I know what this word means. So I'd Google it or I'd see a doctor doing something and I, I would, you know, do you mind if I watch, mm -hmm. you know, and really just get your foot in the door and be hungry for knowledge because they, they, people want to teach you, you know, they, we need people in this field. Um, no matter where you are, if you're in, you know, Alaska or Florida, there is a need for veterinary professionals. Um, and if you're hungry to learn and there are people that will teach you and it's just, you have to have that hunger and the, the faith that it will come. <laughs> and I think that goes with a lot of mm -hmm. jobs these days sure. is just that hunger to be awesome mm -hmm. and learn and mm -hmm. just be involved mm -hmm. and definitely asking yeah. to watch and yeah. learn and I think that's important with any anything anything yeah. you have to be your own advocate you know people you know will ask me well how did you learn how to do that I asked yeah I wanted to know how to do it so I asked will you show me how to do this will you watch me do this and make sure that I'm doing it correctly you know and like quizzing you know myself with the doctors and being like oh so this is what this means right mm -hmm. it in any in any field you know you work and you know be be your own advocate and want for that next you know yeah. whatever it is if you don't, don't just oh i don't know how to do it and you i think how to do it and i think our generation is is getting to that point mm -hmm. where we're learning that yes we do need to ask mm -hmm. that people are not just gonna tell us how to do things <laughs> that we do need to be that person to reach out and be like hey i'm not sure about this like you did ask me to maybe you know write a press release mm -hmm. in my aspect you know mm -hmm. i i had never written a press release before i came here but I w asked how, and I got the answers, mm -hmm. and now I write press releases. Yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, one of those things, you know, in every, like you said, in every career, you just grab, grab that knowledge and, yeah. you know, take it and, 
you know, hone in on it and then move on to the next thing and it'll pay off in the end no matter what it is. Absolutely. And then one other thing. Mm -hmm. What do you think is one way that our listeners can help make kindness matter? So one way that, you know, our listeners can help kindness matter is, you know, sharing our message, you know, getting us out, you know, further. Um, and then, you know, in your own communities, you know, paying you a little more extra attention, you know, to like your, you know, your stray cats, you know, your feral cats, you know, providing them, you know, food and water and shelter, you know, is a huge thing. We do find, you know, a huge benefit of community cats. Um, and um, yeah, no, I agree with that. And I, I do think that a lot of people have reservations about helping community cats For sure. um, just because they don't want to maybe escalate, escalate the population. Yeah. But there's so many ways with TNVR mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. other community cat services that we offer and other places offer to help kind of mitigate that situation, but still give the cats quality care and yeah. attention. Um, of course, they benefit a community, you know, and they, you know, especially when we do, you know, the TNVR, you know, and make sure that, you know, the population stays under control. Um, it really just, you know, they can be a really good benefit for the community mm -hmm. um, and in, in the right numbers. Right. Um, so I think that's all the time that we have for today. Um, and I just wanted to share with everybody, Cat Depot is a 501c3 nonprofit organization located in Sarasota, Florida. Our mission is to save lives, find loving homes, and provide resources and education to improve the destiny of homeless cats. You can visit our website, catdepot.org, for even more resources and ways you too can make kindness matter. And remember, no act of kindness, however small, is ever wasted. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.